welcome everyone, and can you all hear me? Thumbs up out, out in the sanctuary, they can, and I hope to see thumbs up in them. So we have a few more weeks where we're negotiating the bridge between Zoom and the sanctuary without a complete sound system to make sure everybody can hear each other. So I will be doing a little bit of translating when people in a sanctuary are sharing so that people in Zoom know what you're saying. We are hoping to make it possible for all of you to speak directly to the people in Zoom without me having to repeat things for you. But just today, so we know, that's still happening. You will be able to hear the people in Zoom, however. You can hear that over the audio system. So welcome, everybody. This is the second Sunday after Easter, and we life of the church to the worship service. So before I forget anybody else, is there anybody who needs to unmute and make an announcement, and then I'll add mine to those? Last week I was guilty of missing announcements. All right, I don't see anybody unmuting, so I'm going to run through the ones I know about. We are planning to reschedule the spring cleanup day because, as it turns out, uh, the Saturday we chose is the same Saturday. So the May 15th date we announced is being rescheduled, but for those Following Lori McAleer's. Gail, you're freezing and breaking in and out. Anybody that wants a little bit, we might just have a. Frozen. Rats, rats. I don't have a way to fix this. Yeah, it's a hot spot. Okay, guys, can you guys hear me yet? Uh, yeah, we can hear you, but you're well, frozen. Can you. Okay, well, I'm going to try to just speak to you for a few minutes then while I work on whether we can improve the signal. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes. And can you see me now? Yes. This is the fun of technology. Yeah, they're all gone. Uh, yeah, this is not awesome we can hear you gail you can that's good yes that's good. all right well then i'm just going to keep going with the the announcements while we play around with wi-fi here in the church this happened once earlier today okay. we have to pray that we have a good day overall so if you can hear me we're going to continue with announcements and those include fitness well zoom is gone entirely i think so. but we can still hear you okay that's good that's good we are having Lori's fitness class on Wednesday. People, if you want to stay, you can help with just cleaning up. Next Sunday, Coach, the former settled pastor of this church, will be our guest minister. And he will be offering us a sermon. And we have a small team organizing reception for him immediately following over at the outside the Whitney Center. So if anybody wants to stay and socialize with Cogen, we are hoping that that will be possible. And beyond that, I don't have any big announcements. There's a plant sale on May 22nd. That's a few weeks out, so we'll give you more information as it becomes available. Yeah, okay, so Linda reminds me, do, if you want to come in person next Sunday, we would really appreciate it if you would make a reservation with us. Just email the church, jcchurch at jacksoncommunitychurch 
www.ghostdoc.org is the way to reach us and let us know that you would like us to include you in the count. Right now, we're not even close to being overrun by people, so there's plenty of room, which is good. A lot of people, I think, are still planning to come by, you know, Zoom to, to hear Pogen. But if you want to come, we would like to get a head count because there is an upward limit at some point. So I think you're all, can, can you guys see me now on Zoom? Yes, everything's in sync, yep. Okay, well, we're, we're gonna pray this holds, um, but I make no promises. I'm not in charge of some of the things that are happening in the environment today. Let's move into worship so that we can hope to have the worship experience intact before we lose our signal again. Alan, would you like to um, play us in with us some centering music, please? Please join me in the call to worship. You can find it either in your bulletin if you're here in the sanctuary with us, and there are about 12 of us, including Alan and myself, gathered here this morning, or you can find it on your screen. We'll post it here. This is adapted from the work of Father Philip Cherkoff. Stand in our midst again today. Enter the circle of our fears. May we listen to your song, Shalom. May we see your hands and your side. Softening the hardened clay from whence we come. not only on your wounds, breathing in forgiveness, wounds becoming the sacred place of mutual compassion, thanks be to God. Now we're going to trust that our signal will hold, and we're going to invite first those in the sanctuary to share any prayers of concern that you may wish to lift up this morning. Zimbabwe, we pray always for our partner church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe, and likewise we pray for the villages in Honduras with which we have formed abiding connections. All right, then I turn to Zoom and I invite prayers from Zoom <laughs> gathering for your concerns. Please unmute if you do have prayers that you wish to lift up and go ahead and speak. I have a prayer um, just to pray for my niece's um, dad. He is in critical condition in a hospital in Florida with um, liver failure. And she flew down there Friday, so. Thank you. For, for Sandy and Jennifer's niece's father. I'd like to pray for Sasha and what she's going through. Thank you. Ongoing prayers for Sasha.
Centers for Jewish Women. There's also an intensive care, I believe, or somewhere in that journey. Anybody else wish to? Arden, you're unmuted. Do you want to pray? Uh, no, I, I'm just trying to get it back to mute. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so taggy. That's great. It's all good. Any other prayers? Um, Meg, do you guys have, can we, do you want to continue to lift up your, your niece? Um, yes, my brother's daughter, Jean, who is um, recovering from um, an autoimmune encephalitis, and it's going to be about a year-long journey, they think, till she's back to normal, if that happens. And, uh, and her sister, um, this girl's sister, uh, uh, just had a miscarriage yesterday, so we're certainly praying for her and her husband, who are profoundly affected by that. For those living with grief, with challenging, debilitating, or life-altering uh, diagnoses or experiences, we think always, of course, of Barry and his spine and his recovery. We think of those living with cancer. We have several among us who are living with cancer diagnoses. Alzheimer's, so many other things. Other prayers of concern here in this, in the room. We're, we're gonna, we've been asked to sort of formalize if we're gonna pray for our body to do it in a way that's not so anatomical. We've been naming virtually every organ in the body because we have somebody who, we have somebody who touches every single organ. Uh, but we want to turn this into a more sacred experience for people. And we'll pray it towards the end of our praying, both out of concern and celebration. And we'll use both Genesis and 1 Corinthians 12 to make it a prayer for all of us, but a prayer that is a holy experience. So before we turn to that prayer, I ask for any prayers of celebration that people first here in the sanctuary may have. And then prayers of concern, I'm sorry, celebration in the room. Sue has a prayer of celebration. Okay, so Sasha made it through the first, the next steps in her m most recent part of her journey and was smiling this morning, first hand report. Other prayers of celebration in the sanctuary. That can also be happiness for anything that you've seen that you are looking at. And prayers in the gathering in Zoom of gratitude or happiness or celebration. Feel free to unmute if you do have one. All right, I'm scanning. So I'm going to share with you the the eight o'clock was pretty good at coming up with reasons to be happy. So we'll, we'll, we'll listen to some of their happiness. <laughs> they were also quiet the way you guys are quiet today. They, they were grateful for the first sightings of a blue jay, for the red buds of the maple trees that were visible underneath the blanket of snow that we had on Friday that remained yesterday and the amazing contrast between those spring signs and one last chance to quench the earth with the melting snow that our our world around here certainly needs. I see people playing with their pets right here in Zoom and I think that's a wonderful sign of hope and happiness. Um, I'm going to ask us all in the in the form of body prayer, if there's a part of your body that you want to pray for, go ahead and put your hands on it. And then I ask you simply to listen to this adaptation of the words of Genesis in 1 Corinthians 12. And in this prayer, we are praying not just for bodies, but we are praying for places in the world. We are praying for the communities in Minnesota where a trial is taking place and so much unrest is focused. We are praying for places like the community in Indiana where a mass shooting took place, as well as our partner communities and places that are celebrating. We pray both in hope and we pray with the need to raise up our fears. 
creator, Christ, and comforter. As we are told in Genesis, all of humankind, each of us, was made in your image and likeness. Today, we lift up your children in prayer, in concern and celebration. This morning, we place into your keeping the parts of our bodies, which are your body, that need healing and hope, comfort and dignity, love and renewal. You give birth to the whole world. So we also ask your attention for the places of the world which need your compassion and your presence. And as we remember from 1 Corinthians 12, we acknowledge with gratitude that you have shared with us a variety of gifts and that these are poured out by your Holy Spirit. The same spirit binds us together so that when one of us cries out, you cry out. And when one of us celebrates, you sing along. You remind us as we gather as your people to understand our lives together by looking at our own human bodies. Each body has many parts, limbs, organs, and cells, yet all are members living in one body. It's the same when we, so many and so different, come together as distinctive parts of Christ's body, Christ's resurrection body, which has been made stronger by shared diversity, unified by belonging to God's self. All of the parts are arranged to function together. Whether you are the strongest or the most vulnerable part, of this body right now. You are necessary and you are called beloved. Today, let us learn anew what it means to live as members of your human and your holy body. Every part dependent on every other part. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt. And if one part is exuberant, all the other parts flourish as well. You and me, we are Christ's body. That's who we are together. That's who each of you is. This faith community is one part of the larger body of Christ. Many distinct members bound together by God's love. We need each other and we depend on each other. When we pray over our individual minds, hearts, and bodies, we are also praying for each other's bodies, hearts, and minds, and for the hurting and the healing, the living and the dying and the resurrected body of Christ, which is all of us belonging to each other, loving each other in this world and the next. And to formalize this prayer that we have lifted up, we pray together unified. And so please, if you would unmute yourselves if you're in Zoom so that we can hear you here in the sanctuary and that we all shall pray the prayer that our Father, our Christ, our Spirit has led us and taught us with. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, and thy will, thy will be done. done. Earth as it is in heaven, this is day, our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Now that um, I've been encouraged to pick on lay readers who are unsuspecting, I will ask for volunteers first. We have two stories told to us in scripture today that are parallel stories and they each have an element that we want to focus on. One out of John 20 and the other out of Luke 24. So we're going to put the text on the screen, and I'm going to ask if anybody would care to unmute and volunteer to read for us this morning. I'll read if you want. Great. So I saw Sandy unmute, and I think Meg is at you. 
Yes. Okay, Meg, why don't you read the first one and Sandy can read the second. From John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And keep going, um, Meg. Oh, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And now the second reading, which will come from Luke and Sandy, if you would read that for us. I hope. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do you doubt arise? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Thank you to both of our volunteer readers and to Alan for playing the music underneath. Please pray with me. O oh, holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We promised that we would focus for these two weeks on prayers that Christ gave to us, that he prayed on our behalf. Last week, we talked about the prayer that he prayed when he met with his disciples on the last night that he gathered with them before he was taken for trial and execution. Today, we focus on the prayer that he offers when he comes back to us beyond death itself. And if you look at those readings, you will see that the prayer is repeated again and again and again, and it is the great deep prayer that he offers to all of us in response to our fear and our doubt and even our anger. It is that prayer, peace be with you. 
Shalom. Shalom, my brothers. Shalom, my sisters. It's the first thing he always says to people when he startled them or surprised them. He meets them with love. As he met those followers 2,000 years ago, he meets each of us also with that same love. Notice that in the story from Luke, everybody was afraid of him. They thought he was a ghost. And if we think about the chemistry of fear, the amygdala, that small and powerful part of our brain that controls so many of our primal emotions kicked into gear. They were flooded with all kinds of neural chemistry and they were looking and they were scared. But then the other part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex kicked in and it started to make meaning of the messages that had been sent to the amygdala. And they started to wonder, could he really be a ghost? Is that what's really happening or is something else going on? And we hear that they were filled with joy, but also with doubt. They were struggling between one state of response and trying to reach the next state of response. We also know that when the brain is flooded with fear, almost nothing else can happen. And the same thing happens when we flood the brain with love. Where love is present, Fear cannot abide. And so the practice of our faith, the faith of the followers that Jesus had called to him already and the practices that we have cultivated for these thousands of years are given to us so that we may meet fear with love, where we are flooded with fear to find a response that changes the way fear is present to us. This is not to say that we're going to get rid of fear or that fear is even wrong. It has for millions of years kept us alive. It's the thing that makes us jump and start and possibly flinch away from something that could harm us. It's an excellent survival mechanism. And the reason that we have the other part of the brain to talk to that original response is to tell us when we actually are safe, even though we've been startled and we think we are not. Jesus meets the fear and the wonder and the doubt and the questions of his followers by returning to them again and again. Shalom, my brothers. Shalom, my sisters. He starts by calming them. And then he invites them to explore his reality. He sits down to a meal with the followers in Luke. It is disarming in human society to sit down together to a meal. It becomes a place of negotiation and trust. Trust that transforms fear and doubt into love and curiosity and hope. And in the Gospel of John, he meets Thomas and Thomas's very concrete questions, which truthfully any of us might have asked by offering himself to be explored, by offering up his own body and saying, go ahead and touch it if you need to. He doesn't reprimand Thomas for his doubt. He does affirm that it is amazing when people are able to believe in the story, the good news of his resurrection without ever having the physical proof that Thomas and the other followers in that room were offered but he doesn't turn away from the question and he does not condemn it. He actually invites it and offers the response that is needed to calm the doubt and the cynicism, the skepticism, the disbelief that first meets that story. Shalom, my brothers and my sisters. Shalom. It's the first thing he says to them and it is the last thing he says to them. It is the blessing that he offers over the meal when he breaks bread and eats fish with them or blesses the cup. The path to peace within us and among us comes by replacing fear with love. We don't deny the role of fear. 
one of the ways that we actually become courageous and that we meet fear with love and replace the response is indeed to call fear as we call all emotional experiences our teacher. Everything that we experience has something to teach us. And no matter what faith tradition you come from, whether you are praying the nine prayers of Buddhism or praying the Christian prayers of our tradition, or the Hebrew prayers that Christ offered up on our behalf, Shalom. We turn towards our fear. We invite it to become a teacher. We look towards that which is different, that which might sow conflict, that which might create loss. And we try to learn from it. We become curious and we ask questions and we meet it by moving towards it, if at all possible. So that what was unknown to us that created the fear becomes something familiar and something that we can live with. Our fear is not gone, but our fear does not have to consume us. Nor does our doubt or our anger. And in times like this in our nation, as the last year has been, and as so many other times in our nation have challenged us, this continues to be the prayer that we need to offer to each other. Peace and gratitude are born out of love, born out of compassion. We flood ourselves and our bodies with love. When we pray for others, even our enemies, when we turn ourselves towards the thing that we are most uncomfortable with and we say, you have a place in my life and I don't know what it is yet, but I will find a way to meet you where you are and make sense of this and create a relationship with you. And if we speak to our emotions this way and if we speak to the things that have divided us, we are turning towards each other, towards ourselves and towards the ideas or the experiences that are dangerous or harmful and meeting them with love when at all possible. But that love begins in a place bigger than us. It is a love that has returned beyond death that has a power we can't even imagine. And so part of our turning away from fear and towards love is to know that we are never alone. If we are locked inside our fear, as those people were locked inside that room, concerned for the consequences that would happen, frozen, unable to act, except to gather and finding comfort in each other, but still afraid. We need to know that love cannot be kept away from us. This love that we follow is holy and it will come through locked doors. It has already moved beyond death itself to be with us. What can separate us from this love? We say it in communion, neither pain nor persecution nor death itself can separate us from this love. This love will find us. This love will change us. And this love will not erase our fear but it will calm our fear and give us perspective and balance and the assurance that we are worthy and wanted and claimed, that we are children of God. We are not orphans. We have been claimed and welcomed into the community of God's love. Christ's prayer for all of us is the prayer that we need to offer to each other and to this world in this time and in all times. Shalom. Peace, my brothers. Peace, my sisters. I will meet you where you are. I will welcome your questions. I will give you the answers you need. I will sit down with you, keep you company, and then I will tell you that what you need, you can find in each other when I have to leave you again. This peace that I give you, I leave with you. 
it is accessible to you. We find it in each other as we find it within ourselves and we find it through connection. The connection that our community creates and the connection that our faith leads us to find in our God. May we find this community together in these times and in all times. Again, we say to you, Shalom. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Peace, my brothers and sisters. This is the prayer that Christ offers you when he meets you beyond death itself, wherever you may be. Amen. Alan's making the tiptoe sock-footed journey from one side of the church to the other. You all can't see him, but he takes off his sneakers so he can play the organ pedals, so he walks around in his socks. <laughs> I'm just paddling on him. It's past time. We're always grateful for your gifts, and so we formally remind you at this time that your contributions to this church Help us, like all the churches in this valley and faith communities all over this world, that this is how we meet each other with love and how we transform fear into love. So your giving is the work of God in the world just as your presence is the gift of love here in this world. You can help us by making a contribution through jxncc.org or by putting your offering in an envelope and leaving it here at the church or mailing it in however you choose to give we remind you and we give thanks for your commitment thank you and now we're going to sing ourselves out with thine is the glory the words are here on the screen and alan's going to go ahead and play it there's no song leader um and again a reminder for those in the sanctuary humming is permitted singing aloud is not i'm uh, sorry it's safety so if you're in zoom you can sing out loud. If you're here, you can hum. Hum to your heart's content. Hum away.
now we get to do our beloved benediction. And again, um, this one will be offered digitally so everyone can follow along. Mm. Um, humming is good here in the sanctuary again. <laughs> Thank you.